Ms. Andrzej Dietrich, I'm Director of the Institute of International Relations. Sadly, I couldn't be here uh, in the morning, but uh, let me first of all join uh, Alica in extending warm welcome to you here uh, today. I'm very glad that we are gathering here for this uh, anniversary of, of the Czech Symposium uh, on foreign policy. And it is my great pleasure uh, to introduce first Deputy Foreign Minister uh, Tomáš Petříček, who uh, was kind enough to uh, agree to join us here today for this last block uh, before lunch and share his view on uh, Czech foreign policy from practitioner's side. So, Tomáš, please. Uh, thank you very much, Andrzej. Uh, Your Excellencies, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to also welcome you uh, here in uh, Černínský palác, uh, the seat of uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and it's a great pleasure for me to uh, be allowed to say uh, some words, uh, short words, uh, before your lunch. Uh, I don't want to uh, be too long so that you can enjoy the lunch uh, and have a nice discussion informal during, the, during this part of the program. Uh, let me start that uh, the Czech Republic is a relatively small country, uh, at least in the global context, maybe medium-sized country in the European context. Uh, however, this implies that uh, our capacity to influence the passage of global events uh, is rather limited. Still, it is not a reason uh, for us to resign uh, on a proactive foreign policy, and I would like to say that active policy is uh, foreign policy is something uh, very important uh, for the ministry at the moment. On the contrary, uh, the open nature of our economy and its high degree of uh, global integration, as well as dependence on the collective defense uh, and collective defense guarantees of our allies, make us an uh, active foreign policy, uh, make an uh, active foreign policy an imperative. Uh, the Czech foreign policy has uh, profited uh, uh, from the membership uh, in the European Union and uh, in NATO. Memberships in these two organizations, we are going to celebrate two anniversaries next, uh, next year, uh, 20 years in NATO and 15 years in, uh, in the U U European Union. These two organizations uh, remain, and uh, I would like to say they will remain the cornerstone of our foreign policy for years to come. I mentioned two anniversaries. Actually, we are going to uh, celebrate three anniversaries next year. Uh, we will commemorate also 30 years since the fall of communism, since the uh, Weather Revolution, uh, which paved our way into uh, these two organizations and which uh, uh, created the foundation for our uh, uh, active foreign policy. And uh, I have to say that uh, we stand for the values uh, that these organizations uh, represent, and uh, which inspired also uh, the events of uh, 1989. Uh, uh, just to say a few, freedom, democracy, rule of law, respect for human rights, or uh, open uh, market economy. Having said that, uh, I have to clearly declare that uh, our anchor is the West and uh, the trans uh, transatlantic uh, area. Uh, more generally speaking, the Czech Republic uh, also profited immensely uh, from what we call the rules-based liberal global order, represented first and foremost by the United Nations, as well as uh, other international organizations such as uh, WTO and others. Uh, for this reason, uh, we also value effective multilateralism, which creates a level playing field in, uh, in the global arena for all actors, for small, for big. Uh, albeit not perfect, at least it seems nowadays. Still, it is better than uh, law of the jungle. For small countries like ours, it is imperative that we strive to maintain it and to improve it. For this, we have uh, bid it for, and we actually won, uh, the presidency of ECOSOC, uh, the third most important uh, United Nations body. We have also presented the candidacy for the United Nations Human Rights Council, uh, and 
the, the world will take uh, place soon, and we expect to uh, play our role in this <coughs> in this uh, in this body. Clearly, this uh, this express our uh, deep commitment to uh, multilateral fora, uh, which creates uh, creates a foundation of our uh, of our international uh, international uh, activities. However, the the basic policy framework uh, the Czech Republic is operating in, uh, and the main point of reference is indeed uh, the European Union. And I would have to say that the European Union, including its common foreign and security policy. Although the European Union foreign policy is still in the making and uh, limited by necessity to reconcile uh, many and sometimes a little, little bit or rather rather different uh, uh, positional stances of 28, probably soon to be uh, 27 member states. Still, this is uh, an important project uh, we would like to contribute to. And uh, if Europe, an economic giant, is to really play a role in the global scene uh, and to really use its economic might and power, we have to work on uh, the future development of uh, our common uh, foreign policy. The work is well underway, and uh, the adoption of the U European Union and global strategy not so long ago was a real milestone, milestone in this. The EU also needs to invest much more in its security and defense. We have been speaking a lot about uh, strategic autonomy of Europe uh, in the recent months. Uh, and indeed, the conventional wisdom says that uh, it is the Americans who do the cooking and the Europeans only wash the dishes. Uh, but I believe that this is, this is not the case and it's not going to be the case anymore. And uh, I believe that this narrative is going to be over soon. We in Europe uh, do realize that uh, we have to work on our muscles so that uh, we can re react to the numerous crises and conflicts that have uh, been prol proliferating in uh, our neighborhood, uh, but even in uh, regions uh, far, a little far away. This doesn't mean that uh, we can do that overnight. Indeed, NATO remains the main guarantor of our collective defense and the US uh, the most important security provider to Europe. But we have to invest in the development of our capabilities and uh, strategic enablers that will may allow us to act uh, whenever the alliance uh, is not willing or capable of doing so. Uh, there has been a number of projects in the recent years. Uh, I would like to mention, for example, PESCO or uh, recently adopted uh, EDIDP, uh, which is going to stimulate the innovation in the defense industry. I think these are the projects uh, we can build on. Furthermore, we need to take a comprehensive approach to our security. It is not only about responding and projecting force. It is perhaps more than anything else about um, acting ahead of troubles. Uh, proactively making our and uh, Europe's environment uh, safer and more secure. Uh, it has been mentioned several times that uh, our aim should be to, to create a belt of stability and prosperity around uh, Europe. We can do this, uh, for example, by addressing root causes of problems using a range of tools, including notably our development cooperation and, and development assistance. Uh, the Czech Republic, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, the Czech Republic is a small landlocked country in Europe. Uh, the relations with our neighbors have always uh, been the key element uh, uh, of our foreign policy. And for, fortunately for us, uh, we are historically in the best position ever. Uh, we have uh, great, very good relations with all our neighbors. Uh, we have a strategic partnership and strategic uh, dialogue with uh, Germany. Uh, we have uh, excellent relations with Slovakia. Uh, we have we pay, uh, paid uh, a visit to Košice on Monday, uh, the, Czech, the whole Czech government uh, for G2G meeting there. Uh, we have also a uh, dialogue uh, with, uh, with Poland, very active one, and uh, we are working uh, very closely with Austria and we are using uh, 
a lot of number of uh, platforms to develop these relations. Uh, I would like to mention, for example, the Slavkov process, uh, which is a rather recent, recent uh, initiative, but uh, the one uh, where we see a lot of, uh, a lot of potential uh, for the future, not only to strengthen our relations with uh, our neighbors, but also to project our, uh, our uh, interests in a region such as uh, Western Balkan. Uh, we are aware that the situation in the EU is not uh, easy at the moment. The Union has uh, gone through numerous crises in the last 10 years, from the financial crisis to sovereign debt crisis, migration crisis, uh, Brexit at the moment. And uh, this has uh, fostered some dividing like across the continent, which we thought we already uh, overcome between East and West, but as well between uh, North and South. Uh, this Dividing lines also uh, also give some of the impetus for rising rise of the populism in Europe, which is uh, one of the issues we will have to uh, have to face and we will have to tackle. Uh, but the greatest challenge to, to remain for the Union at the moment is to keep unity and cohesion of the of this club and uh, to. to increase our capabilities to, uh, to face external challenges. Uh, it is important for us to try to overcome the differences, especially on some very difficult issues, such as, for example, migration or Russia, where uh, the solidarity among the member states <laughs> among the member states uh, uh, needs to be proven. It is indeed no easy task, uh, and there are no clear-cut solutions uh, uh, on the table, and some of the problems uh, doesn't have a, a single, so, single solution, there is no silver bullet to, to solve them. But it is still better to squabble uh, behind a negotiation uh, t a table than uh, wage a war or wage a trade war against each other, and this is what uh, Europe stands for. Uh, I would like to uh, move to one of the big issues uh, which have, we are currently discussing. This, uh, this is the future of uh, transatlantic uh, alliance and transatlantic relations. Uh, last week uh, we hosted a conference on this uh, very topic in this, uh, in this very hall. Uh, soon uh, I will be addressing uh, the SIPA forum uh, in Washington, again touching on the issue of the uh, future of the transatlantic relations. And uh, I have to stress that the strength of this alliance is uh, that, it, that it's not a mere coalition of the milling. It is, uh, it is more than this. Uh, it has been uh, underpinned by identical values and uh, converging interests. It uh, has been mentioned uh, and uh, we, I think, share on both sides of the Atlantic that uh, this alliance is built on uh, freedom, on the appreciation of freedom, respect to human rights, uh, uh, support to democracy, and uh, these are the values we can still build on. Indeed, uh, uh, there is a sense that uh, with the current U.S. administration, there are a little bit different or diverging uh, uh, positions on uh, the future of the transatlantic bond. There are issues such as uh, climate change, trade, nuclear deal with Iran, uh, United Nations, Human Rights Council, or UNESCO, uh, where uh, the partners on the two sides of the Atlantic uh, uh, doesn't agree, but uh, but uh, I'm convinced that uh, the transatlantic bond is uh, still far too important for us uh, to let it fail, and uh, I hope that we will be able to overcome and work with our American friends uh, to address their their concerns. Uh, and uh, not only to dismiss the uh, differences by saying that uh, they will go away once uh, President Trump is gone. So transatlantic bond is something uh, we, where we have to work on, uh, where we have to work uh, uh, very actively at the moment. Uh, I would like to probably close with, uh, with, uh, with reconfirming that the Czech foreign policy has, uh, has been and will be uh, very focused on the issue of Western Balkan. Uh, we 
we have been supporting uh, the ambition of, uh, of the countries of the region uh, to join the, the European Union and, and to, to become part also of the NATO and uh, uh, we are happy that uh, at the moment uh, the European institutions are sending signals that uh, uh, the enlargement process can be speeded up uh, after years of stagnation. And I hope that uh, next year we will start uh, start uh, uh, accession talks with uh, Albania, Albania and former Republic of Macedonia. Uh, and uh, indeed, the Czech Republic uh, has a played a role in this process. And uh, I think that we also have something to give in return for for the benefits of uh, the Union's membership uh, to other countries still outside of the Union. Uh, let me finish that I'm really happy that uh, this, uh, this forum is taking, taking place today and uh, I would like to thank the uh, organizers uh, for, uh, for their effort to, uh, put, into, to put together an uh, excellent agenda and uh, I would like to wish you all a fruitful debate during the afternoon as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much indeed. I, I should start by saying that uh, Moscow was calling, so apparently you got Russians interested uh, you know, listening. No, but seriously, uh, uh, I, I think it's comforting for, for many uh, in, in this hall to hear such a clear statement of principles that should guide Czech foreign policy and also sober analysis of the challenges uh, at hand. And I will be uh, very brief and I only want to underline how one or stress stress one point. I mean, obviously, we have foreign policy in terms of actions and outcomes, but uh, for this foreign policy to 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 work properly, we also need to have a system of principles that form, explain, and legitimise this process uh, of governing. And here, I believe this is um, a momentous time and opportune moment uh, to to get more specific specific on the ideas about it. An environment in which we find ourselves as the Czech Republic on political interests which have to be resolved the definition has to result from a legitimate process and they have to also have external acceptance from community of states where we would like to see uh, ourselves and of course then there are organizational ideas uh, that uh, speak to uh, how we translate the limited resources that we have to, to make good on uh, those principles. And I believe that uh, these ideas have to, have to be no nonsense, right? but they also should entail sort of an element of dreaming. We should never forget to, to dream of a better world, a world which is, which is more just, where there is more equality, less war, human suffering, uh, and this should be sort of the moral compass of uh, our foreign policy. And uh, in fact, I see very little uh, direct opposition between what sometimes is called real realist or real politic, hard nosed realist foreign policy and, and this element of dreaming. Because of course we uh, can get and we should get uh, sort of no nonsense ideas about how to deal with the crisis of legitimacy within the European Union without necessarily falling for these collapsologist uh, narratives, but sort of think of how perhaps the decision making process can be made slightly more transparent, how it can be communicated better, and how uh, sort of the, the famous cap capability expectations gap, uh, which continues to exist in my opinion, can be closed. Uh, we can be more sort of no nonsense on. Uh, what is going on in the transatlantic relations on, on Russia. We should see Russia for what it is, not what it wants to be. Uh, and we should see it as, as a regional power which wants to somehow change its immediate environs and get acceptance from the West, not uh, as sort of a would be kind of contender uh, of, of uh, the United uh, West. But we should also be, be no nonsense uh, on sort of the bigger ideas about international order, which some claim has entered the era of um, post-liberalism. We can sort of tacitly accede to, to the notion that the world is getting increasingly uh, multipolar, or we can seek to do 
a little, but still something uh, to to further sort of a new constitution for multi sort of multi uh, lateral rules based order. And as you said in, in your own speech, you know, in, a, in a jungle, a small state or smaller state like Czech Republic will never thrive. So it, it's in our very core interest to to promote and sort of help to produce and reproduce this rules-based order. It's, it's a very realist foreign policy, uh, in, in my opinion, to, to avoid a sort of tendencies toward enclosure, selfishness, uh, and indifference. And let me express my personal hope that with uh, social democrat political leadership in the ministry, a uh, party that has a long tradition of, of openness, solidarity, uh, and uh, attention to, to issues of uh, global uh, equality, uh, we will get there. So thank you very much again. And since we have a few minutes left uh, before lunch, uh, Deputy Minister Petricek has agreed to take uh, one or two questions uh, from the public. So please, uh, if you have a question, now is the time to ask. Okay, I already see uh, multiple hands. But I, if I'm not incorrect, the first was Vít Dostal and then Jakub Eberlach. Okay. Okay, we just start the Association for International Affairs. Thank you for your presentation on uh, uh, on uh, uh, what are what is what is the landscape for the Czech foreign policy, uh, and you uh, spoke a lot about the uh, common European uh, foreign policy. I would like to ask you about two things which uh, are on the table. Uh, first, the qualified majority voting in some foreign uh, policy areas. Uh, uh, do you think that it is uh, feasible and would you support uh, such a uh, such move as it was proposed by, by Jean-Claude Juncker at his State of the Union speech? And the second, the, the, uh, the French-led European Intervention Initiative. The Czech Republic is not part of that. Uh, there is uh, only Estonia from the Central and Eastern Europe. Do you think that the Czech Republic should join it uh, to uh, perhaps to bind more with the Western European uh, allies also in this, uh, in this initiative? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, both both questions are uh, are really uh, topical and uh, uh, reflecting on the first one uh, regarding the quali uh, qualified majority voting uh, in the area of common foreign and security policy. Uh, I'm afraid we are not yet uh, ready uh, as, a, as, a, as a club of 27 member states to accept it, and I, I'm afraid uh, there will be strong opposition against it. But uh, I think that uh, the possibility might be to identify parts of the common foreign policy uh, where this can be applied. And in the long run, I, th I think that uh, we should really go the, this direction uh, while maintaining the coherent, uh, coherent uh, of the Union. Uh, on the French initiative, uh, uh, I have to admit I uh, haven't been able to discuss this uh, issue with my colleagues so far, uh, but uh, in general uh, I think the Ministry uh, would like to support uh, the, uh, will and will support the uh, strategic cooperation uh, with our Western, uh, Western, uh, Western partners within the framework of the Union as well. Uh, even though there are some, some, uh, some debates still uh, within the government, if uh, the right point of reference is, uh, is NATO, I believe that uh, uh, if, if we are to play as Europe uh, the role in the NATO, we need to build our capabilities uh, through these kind of init initiatives. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is something uh, we, should, we will support. Jakub Eberle, Institute of International Relations. Uh, I would like to move the question more to the global dimension of Czech foreign policy, because one thing that has been criticized for a long time, uh, not the least by us, is that uh, the Czech Republic has been rather reluctant, uh, if not ignorant, on issues like the climate change or development assistance. Let me remind you that we are currently giving less than the half of our commitment within the EU on official development assistance, despite the rhetorics that migration crisis should be, should be solved in the places of its origins. Nevertheless, in the recent speech by Mr. Hamacek, uh, those issues were kind of highlighted. Uh, can, you, can you give us a hint whether these are finally 
taking a more central stage in the Czech foreign policy, and if so, if there are any concrete projects under, under development currently. Thank you. Uh, indeed, uh, the question of, uh, of, uh, of development assistance is going to be uh, one of the issues uh, the new leadership, and I would like to thank Andre uh, for his confidence that uh, the social democratic leadership uh, might be the, the one which uh, shift the focus on, on issues, of, issues of justice, uh, uh, sustainable development, so, so on. And, uh, and you are right, we are not uh, giving, uh, I think we are at the moment uh, meeting our uh, international commitments uh, by, by one third only. And uh, it's the right time to, to start debating that uh, if, we are, if we are really uh, to solve the problems where they are, not uh, only the consequences of the problems, then we, uh, we, don't, we don't have many, many tools uh, except for development assistance and, and I, will, I will certainly try to push, uh, push this agenda in the government and, uh, and I think that we should start increasing not only our defense budget but also our development budget. And uh, when it comes to climate change issues, uh, I mentioned that uh, we are really concerned that the United States are now, uh, now uh, retreating from this international, international debate uh, and uh, I believe that the Europe now has to play a key role because uh, uh, the climate change is a cause of many of the problems we are discussing. Uh, we are discussing in relation to migration uh, but to, in relation to other, other issues uh, and uh, Mr. Hamachik mentioned it that uh, one, of the uh, one of the focuses and priorities for the, f uh, for the upcoming years will be uh, our policy towards Africa. Uh, in, in this region, uh, we, uh, we recognize the need to strengthen our presence. Uh, therefore, we are going to open a new embassy in Sahel region in, uh, in Mali. Uh, in order to be able to better implement uh, also not only multilateral aid, but also bilateral aid there. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, to talking, for talking to us today, answering uh, the questions. Uh, it's my pleasure now to, to announce that lunch uh, is, is being served. Uh, it will be also an opportunity to continue the discussions that we've had here so far. Uh, please be directed uh, in, in there and then to the, to the left, to the gallery, where you will find the flying buffet. Okay, so thank you very much. Bye-bye. Enjoy your meal.